Welcome back. My guest, Wale Olani Pekun, was conferred with the prestigious rank of Senior Advocate of Nigeria, SAN, in 1991. Arguably one of Nigeria's leading baristas, he has been involved as counsel and amicus career in many of Nigeria's landmark cases. He is also in top demand internationally as an expert in Nigerian law. We had a chat about the anti-graft war, the prosecution of Mr. Ricky Taffa, the comments of the EFCC boss and even that of the president about the role of lawyers and the judiciary in tackling corruption. We talked about so much more. The acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Mr. Ibrahim Magu, recently accused senior lawyers like yourself of frustrating its anti-corruption war. His exact words are, senior advocates are the ones promoting graft when they should be putting the interests of the nation first. What are your comments? I think we are getting a lot of things wrong in this country. I respect the acting chairman of the EFCC, Mr. Magu. I've known him for years. He's been in the, at the EFCC since that commission was established. I was then the president of the Nigerian Bar Association. We assisted them under the leadership of uh, chairmanship of Nuhu Ribadi to ensure that the EFCC took off smoothly. At that point in time, the NBA even had a representative on their board. And if I can remember very well, Al Haji Lekan Yusuf, who is now a senior advocate of Nigeria, was the nominee of the NBA on the EFCC board. So it's unfair for him to generalize that senior lawyers are frustrating the efforts of the EFCC. That's not right. We have to get things right in this country. What do we want? Do we want a government that is rooted in the rule of law and constitutionalism? There is no democracy in the world that is not anchored in the rule of law that is not rooted in the rule of law. But then, what I've seen in this, what I've noted in our country is that people who are temporarily in positions of power will appear to me not to want, not to want to tolerate any dissent opinion. That whatever they do, whatever they say is right. Lawyers are constant, judges are constant, the legal profession is constant. The institution of the judiciary is very constant. It will outlive all of us. Who defended Libadu when he had some problems with the Jonathan administration? Were they not senior lawyers? Who was the executive chairman of the EFCC yesterday? Was he not? Lamude. Did Lamude not have problems with the authorities, with the powers, with principalities, with the government of Nigeria? Alleged one trillion naira million diversion. Government, federal government orders EFCC to probe Lamude. Now, when you look at some other headlines, Lamude goes to court to challenge his arrest. Then you see it, another lawyer, a senior lawyer, goes to court to file action against the federal government to stop the government from probing him. At another instance, to stop the Senate from probing him. Were those lawyers frustrating the efforts of the EFCC? I want to plead with every one of us, and particularly those who are in government, no lawyer will want to frustrate the efforts of the government. I, for one, I would not want to. But then, every lawyer has a job to do. It's only a lawyer who doesn't know what he's doing that we say, look, for those the government, for those the public, for those powers and principalities have labeled as tainted, as stained, as corrupt, you will not defend them. What do lawyers stand for? Then we are going to an era in this country, which is very dangerous, whereby 
we presume, contrary to the dictates of the Constitution, that whoever is accused of a criminal offense is presumed to be innocent until the contrary is proved. Now in Nigeria, what I see very alarming, very dangerous, and very bizarre is a situation whereby everybody is presumed guilty, even without proving the contrary. Then, with all respect to Mr. President, Mr. President said the problem of Nigeria, I mean, the judiciary is, the, is his problem in his efforts at waging war against corruption. I respect Mr. President. I love him. And let me say this without being immodest. As of 23rd of March, 23rd through to 25th or so, I was still leading a team of very profound Nigerian lawyers to defend some of the cases filed against Mr. President in court by some people not wanting him to contest the election. Judiciary listening to us, even when we were overruled, I made an application, oral application. Latif Agbemi was there with me. Akiolu Jimi was there. I made an oral application, particularly in the case of Bokosha against INEC and five others, that my lord, Justice Kola Wale, stay proceedings. The other lawyer said, no, there was no formal application. I convinced the judges to stay proceedings. If proceedings were not stayed and judgment was given, perhaps the elections will not, the presidential election would not have held. Nobody will now say that it was the judiciary that hastened the holding of the election. Everybody has forgotten. I met with the, chair, the national chairman of uh, APC at the lounge of the airport, Namdi Asikwe Airport, about a week ago. And I accosted him. I said, Mr. Mr. Chairman, sir, all this happened. We did that for our nation, senior lawyers. Not that you, have, not that you paid us. And in fact, I want to say this. Not that even we have even gotten any letter of saying thank you. But we did it for our nation. Then at every small event that you know, lawyers try to defend their clients, then we start accusing them. Tomorrow, I don't pray that anybody goes into the dock. But then, what of if tomorrow I take on my wig and gown and I say, I'm defending Mr. President, I'm defending Mr. Magu, I'm defending any governor, it has happened and it, is always, it will always happen. Let's talk about election petitions because you've said a lot about elections. You were lead counsel for Governor Wiki in River State. You lost at the tribunal. You also lost at the Court of Appeal. What changed at the Supreme Court? Law change. The law is very clear. The law is very certain. But then, in the wisdom of the Supreme Court, they allowed the appeal. I don't want to make some comments as a senior counsel and as a role model. But all I want to say, in answer to your question, which is probing, is that what the Supreme Court is doing is that there must be certainty in law. There must be certainty. For the sake, for the purpose, for the enhancement, for the support of even investment in Nigeria, when you go to any climb, you go to any nation, the first thing you do when you want to invest you ask yourself, are the laws there certain? It's not a question of judiciary, different courts, different divisions of courts singing the scandal tunes. No. What the Supreme Court is doing now is to take over the leadership, to give credible leadership to the judiciary in this country, and by extension to the legal profession. Then let us also face this. Election matters and that is it. Politicians won't confess who pressurizes the judges. Is he not a politician? Or let me put it this way, who pressurizes the judges? Are they not politicians? Sometimes true lawyers. No. Well, I wouldn't know, but I know myself. That I will never do, and that I've never done, and that I won't do. To me, a law is so interesting. Law is so stimulating. Law is so fascinating. Law is so intellectually demanding. There is beauty when you argue, when you cross swords in court. Why should any lawyer 
go and want or add to any lawyer, influence a judge. You influence the judex through your submissions, through your research, through your postulations, and not through maybe corrupt practices. No lawyer, to me, no lawyer should do that. To me also, no judge should make himself or herself a ready tool for any corrupt practice. No. But again, who are the people who do it? Are they not politicians? Are they not clients? Are they not litigants? So let us also search our conscience. Let's end with the case of the EFCC against Mr. Ricky Tafa, senior advocate of Nigeria. In the two-count charge on which he was arraigned before the court, your name is at the top of a list that has 33 SANs and 16 other lawyers listed to defend Mr. Tafa. Did you give permission for your name to be used? I'm a leader of the bar. And um, this is not the first time I've joined people in defending. I mentioned one, the one we defended the, the APC and candidate Muhammad Buhari. I don't need to give my permission for my name to be used. But then, for any lawyer, for any lawyer, if you are recognized as a leader by your colleagues, it's a thing of pride. So they don't, you don't need to ask for my permission. My name is a commodity. My name is virtually an exhibit which is available to every lawyer in this country. Let me say this. This is not the first time we are having problems. Lawyer, lawyers are having problems with the authorities in this country. When I was president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Festus Kayamo was arrested by Obasanjo. He was detained for about three, four days. He wasn't released, he wasn't charged to court. And I issued a statement giving Obasanjo 12 hours ultimatum. If we don't release him, this will do this, we'll do that. Within two, three hours after that statement, Obasanjo directed that he should be released and that he should be charged to court. We are ready to go and defend him. Not because Ricky Tafa is a senior advocate of Nigeria. You are asking me, you are asking me whether I get permission for my name to be used. What of the central bank wanting to encroach on Nigerian, you know, on the practice of law in this country by saying, you know, through all these laws on foreign on money laundering, was I not the one briefed to lead some other lawyers to go and challenge the action of the central bank and the FCC on saying that if a lawyer is paid so so amount, he must go and report. And some people are trying now to regulate our profession. Did I not do it? We won the case. We succeeded. And that's why lawyers are free now to operate their accounts without any molestation by any bank, by the central bank, without questioning. Honorable Justice Aisha Tokweson remarked at the arraignment on the huge number of lawyers showing support for Mr. Ricky Tafa. She said it was designed to intimidate and harass the court and she declared that she would not be intimidated. But why the need for such huge show of solidarity? Are we saying an SN can do no wrong or that law enforcement agents cannot touch a senior advocate? It's not intimidation. When you come to defend, we defend judges, we defend lawyers. We defend ordinary people in the land. We defend ordinary citizens. Not because he's a senior advocate of Nigeria. But then, what, is, what exactly is the problem? What's the difference if it's only one lawyer and a thousand and one lawyers? It's only one of them who will talk. It's only one of them who will address the court. Assuming, quote and unquote, that the honorable presiding judge employed that terminology, that metaphor, intimidation, it's not an intimidation when the state is prosecuting. <laughs> no, it's, it's not intimidating. It's not also intimidating. When even the, apart from the fact that the state is prosecuting, the Nigerian nation is prosecuting. Even when you say EFCC versus so, 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 or when you say FRN, Federal Republic of Nigeria, that's the entire nation. So even if you bring a small lawyer, like Mr. Madu was saying, he said one small lawyer. That small lawyer has behind him, without being displayed, the coat of arms. It's just as like you say, a small police officer. My father used to tell me, when we were young, that when you see a policeman, you see the uniform, 
It is the Nigerian uniform, it was, you know, the Nigerian coat of arms on him. So what's the big deal? The nation is prosecuting somebody and some lawyers are defending him. It's something, it's, you, you, you equate it with the battle of David and Goliath. And who is the Goliath now? The nation, the state that is prosecuting is the, is the Goliath. And the lawyers that are, are defending, they constitute the David. It's okay to criticize decisions of the courts, but one must do so without abusing the judges or bringing the judiciary into disrepute. Nigerians also need to guard against assuming people guilty when only allegations are made against them. Besides, accused persons are entitled to their day in court. These are only a few thoughts from my guest, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Wale Olani Peku. As always, I'll take feedback on any of our social media handles. Don't forget that you can find these in past episodes of the program on our YouTube channel. I'm Shola Shieli. Thank you for watching.